Hi, I'm Danny. Welcome back to another video. In today's video, I go over the maintenance procedure for a GDI engine. GDI stands for Gasoline Direct Injection. This technology offers improved efficiency and power compared to the conventional port fuel injection systems. If your vehicle is a 2020 or newer, chances are you have a GDI engine. Most of the newer cars on the road today are GDI. This technology has changed the way you should be maintaining your vehicle. In this video, I'll show you the maintenance you need to do to prevent costly repairs. Follow these simple recommendations that I'm about to share with you, and this could save you thousands of dollars in future repairs. Let's start with a quick comparison of the traditional engine and the new GDI engine. Unlike the traditional fuel injection engines, GDI injects the fuel directly into the combustion chamber at high pressure. This allows for more precise fuel control, improving power and fuel economy. All good stuff. However, it also increases combustion temperature and the heat increases carbon buildup. In a traditional port fuel injection engine, the fuel injector sprays the fuel into the intake manifold where it washes over the intake valve, cleaning off the carbon deposits before entering the cylinder. Using a good fuel with additives in these traditional engines is usually enough to prevent carbon buildup. I cover this in a video on my YouTube channel. I'll put a link to this in the description below. Unlike port fuel injection engines, GDI engines inject fuel directly into the combustion chamber, bypassing the natural process of cleaning those intake valves. This direct injection boosts power boost performance, but it also increases heat, which contributes to carbon buildup over time. Carbon buildup can cause problems like rough idle, reduced power, and reduced fuel economy, and it increases emissions. GDI systems also use high pressure fuel injectors that are sensitive to fuel quality, and they're prone for clogging from low quality fuel. If you've made it this far in the video, do me a favor and subscribe to my channel. It really helps me out. And that's what this channel is all about. It's helping each other out. By the way, this video is not sponsored in any way. So all this information just comes from experience. Let's get back to the video. So how do you prevent these issues? Here are some of the key tips that I wanted to share with you. So you want to use only high quality oil and change it regularly. Consult your owner's manual for the specific type and weight. Depending on your driving habits, change your oil every four to 5,000 miles. If you drive aggressively, let's go 4,000 miles. If you make a lot of short trips to the store, go 4,000 miles. If you're doing freeway driving, you can extend it to 5,000 miles. I would never listen to the manufacturer that suggests a 7,500 to 10,000 mile oil change. That's just gonna cost money once the warranty runs out. Use quality gasoline. Gasoline contains additives. Top tier gasoline like Chevron, which is what I use in my 2020 Highlander, I use it because of the Tecron additive. This meets a higher detergent standard, benefiting newer engines. Shell, ExxonMobil, I believe they're okay too. They have additives, but many automakers recommend that Tecron and the Chevron has Tecron in it. You can also add bottles of Tecron and I'll also put a link to some cleaners in the video description below. Check those out. You can also use other GDI injector cleaners. But again, I recommend the Tecron, and that's what a lot of the car manufacturers recommend also. Let me try to clarify the traditional engine against the GDI engine. So they both still get their air from your air filter. They both go down to a throttle body, and then they go into the intake. So from the intake, if you can see the injectors here, 
So these injectors are mounted directly down here to the intake. They're not mounted to the block like a GDI engine. These injectors also are about 35, 40 PSI, and a GDI engine is much, much higher. So these go into the intake, they mix with the air, and then they go over that valve, and that valve gets cleaned as that fuel and air goes into the engine. So that's what I wanted to kind of clarify. One more quick tip. If you're working on the fuel system on a GDI engine, you need to relieve the residual fuel pressure. To do that, you normally pull the fuel pump fuse and just run the car until it dies. If you learned something in this video, give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Don't want